I've already reviewed the 7-inch WiMAX display, but the kind people at Andesin sent me through the 10-inch version, and for me that looked like just the perfect size for a desktop arcade cabinet. But let's have a look at what this display can actually do. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. Andesine recently sent me through the larger brother of their 7 inch display, which is a 10 inch display. Now I've got this earmarked for a couple of projects, but in this video I just want to go through and show you what this screen can do, the sound and touch functions, how it works with the Raspberry Pi, and whether it's sort of worth buying one for yourself or not. So let's get into the video and see what you get. So the 10 inch LCD panel comes with everything you need to connect it to either your Raspberry Pi or any other computer or console with an HDMI output. So inside the box you'll get the LCD panel itself and this is an IPS screen with a quoted 178 degree viewing angle which basically means that you'll be able to see the screen uh, as long as you're somewhere in front of it. It has a built-in 5-point capacitive touch screen, so you can easily use your fingers to control your mouse on any compatible operating system, along with all the usual pinch-to-zoom and other multi-touch gestures. Now the unit also has built-in stereo sound, which is taken from the HDMI signal and routed through to connectors on the back of the panel and then on to the two included speakers. Now with these speakers being mounted as separate units, you can easily extend the speaker cables and have them mounted anywhere you want. Now, now as I said earlier, my ultimate use for this unit will be to build a desktop arcade cabinet. So this will let me mount my speakers on the cabinet walls rather than at the back of the LCD panel. Now although this device can be used with any HDMI input, it has been designed primarily for use with the Raspberry Pi. So your Raspberry Pi is mounted on fixing points at the back of the unit, um, but it does require a couple of specialist connectors to plug it directly into the HDMI input, and USB port for the touchscreen function, and all of those again are at the back of the panel. So in the box you'll find two sets of connectors uh, for the Raspberry Pi 3B and 4B, and the system is also compatible with the Raspberry Pi version 2. So with a Raspberry Pi mounted at the back of the unit, it basically becomes an all-in-one computer system. So you also get a set of legs that can be screwed onto the base of the panel, allowing it to sit at a comfortable viewing angle on your desk. And finally then, you're also supplied with an HDMI cable to connect it to any other HDMI output. Uh, for example, you can use this as a second screen for your laptop. Um, you also get a micro USB power cable, uh, and this micro USB power cable is only needed if you're using it as a standalone screen. Uh, when you've got a Raspberry Pi plugged into the back of the unit, um, it will take its power from your Raspberry Pi power supply. So, so in, in that case, do make sure that you use a high enough powered supply to cover both your Raspberry Pi and the LCD panel. So using the display, um, it's actually a very versatile display. Um, by just connecting it to an HDMI source, you get a standalone monitor. So you can use this as an extension screen for your laptop or as a quick display for your Raspberry Pi or games console. And again, that will give you full sound over HDMI all built into this one unit. So using the screen for the Raspberry Pi running in desktop mode, um, we've got a nice display here. It is, if I check on the, and again, we've got full touch screen display on here. So again, if I run um, NeoFetch then, we can see that we're running at the 1024 by 600 pixels resolution. So the, the screen is displaying at its natural resolution rather than taking a, a 1080p and scaling it down onto the screen. And that actually gives us a nice clear display. And you can see here that the actual text and so on is very, very um, legible. Using it for things like um, 
YouTube and so on and, and browsing. Again, we've got a nice clean display, very easy to read the actual text. If I come into one of my articles here, again, we're using touchscreen values on here. Um, let that load up. If I scroll down, you can see that we now have our text all nicely, um, nice size on there. And eventually I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi 3B, um, so it is a bit slow as regards bringing up all these um, bits and pieces. But if I then start to look at running this video. The Raspberry Pi Pico is a powerful And I can turn that on to full screen. But oh. most of the time we only use half of its processing power. And you can see that we've got a nice clear display here. Um, there's no issues at all there with color resolution and, and so on. Uh, and hopefully you can hear that the sound itself then is, is running through the, the built-in speakers and we're getting good sound quality coming out. Uh, I'm not sure how well it's turning up on the recording here, but Hi, from, uh, from me listening to it, um, it, it's, it's very, very good. So let's come out of this. Let's just close that down. So it might go here. Okay, so um, other things you might want to use it for in desktop mode then of course we can come into Thony here and start working with things like our Raspberry Pi Pico and so on. And again, the Raspberry Pi itself is very good for connecting to those. So again, we've got the 1024 by 600 screen resolution, which doesn't give you massive amount of space for developing in, but it is very readable. Um, it's a good clear display. And again, we, we, can, we can get that into a nice little unit. So if, if, I, if I come zooming out a wee bit, we can see that setting it up with a wireless keyboard and mouse gives me a very neat little Raspberry Pi system here where we have <clears throat> our, our nice screen, a full-size keyboard and, and, and a mouse, obviously. Um, full touchscreen display on the unit itself. And, and that, I, I find, is a very, very neat package. Uh, and one of the things which I've been using it for, which is very good, is in retro computer emulation. So in this setup, I've got it set up as a Commodore 64. So if I just turn that on, and this is using bare metal emulation. So we should find that we, as soon as everything boots up, we drop straight into a Commodore 64. And there we go. And again, the good thing about this is that we have now a, a full-size keyboard attached to it because um, some of these emulators um, use some of these special function keys over here um, for, for quite important buttons on the machine itself. So we have our, our sort of clear and restore buttons over here um, and, and some of these buttons aren't available on, on some of the more reduced keyboards um, and unfortunately some of the ones like the Raspberry Pi 400. So you won't be able to get um, a, a full sort of emulator up and running with those machines. So that gives us then the idea where we now have a nice little package here. And in fact, I can now try out different computers running on this system where I have a screen and keyboard in here. So Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, things like that. And, and please do keep an eye out on my channel because um, of course I'll be running videos on how to set up these bare metal emulators so that you can set up your Raspberry Pi as a dedicated little um, computer. And again, by switching in and out the um, SD card, you can swap between really whatever computer you want to emulate. So one of the main reasons why I was looking to get hold of one of these um, LCD panels uh, was to build up a desktop arcade cabinet. And again, many thanks to Andesine who sent me this unit out um, for review. Um, so we have again our, our 10 inch display then. I find that looked to me pretty much an ideal size then to match it with the arcade controls. And if we put all of this then inside a, a desktop arcade cabinet, we're gonna have a really nice, neat unit. And again, with the display itself having both the built-in Raspberry Pi at the back of it there and the built-in speaker system. And again, the actual speakers are on separate little leads, so I can actually extend those leads to take the speakers out to the arcade cabinet itself and to give it a better sound that way. Um, this, this really just seems like a really neat package. Uh, and here I'm using um, a, a set of arcade buttons mounted into a box here. 
but these arcade buttons tend to come with a USB controller. So all I simply need to do is to use the controller that comes with the buttons, use the USB lead, and then have that routed through the cabinet directly into my Raspberry Pi. So I'm, I'm not gonna have to bother with connecting up any GPIO pins and everything like that. Um, it will all just simply plug together. And with RetroPie then, this unit will be seen as just a standard USB controller and that will hook in. Uh, and everything should fit together really neatly and really easily. Um, all I really need to do is to build a cabinet and then just simply bolt these items into that and, and that's the project finished. Um, so, so do please keep, keep an eye on the channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, pl please do, because um, that will of course be another video coming up over, over the next couple of months. So again, everything that's here, here is, is working really well. So we can of course get into all of our games and, and really um, that's all we need then to make this into a, a, an arcade machine. So gameplay on this then, say it's, we can put some money in here and go into here. And so everything works really well. The screen itself is very responsive. Hopefully you can hear the sound on this. So again, all the sound is all um, built into it, of course. And we then have our, our arcade machine up and running. So that, that is then our WiiMaxit um, 10 inch panel running, as I said, at 1024 by 600 pixels resolution. Um, for me, this is just the ideal package then for building up an arcade machine. But as you've seen already, as regards building up a little mini computer, so I'm using it a lot as well for my uh, retro computers, the sort of Commodore 64 um, ZX Spectrum and so on, and with teamed with a, a wireless keyboard, that is ideal. Um, so that is another great use for it, and the, sc the screen resolution on that is is exactly what you want. Um, we don't really want to have it um, overly um, high definition. We really want to get it down there. It gives a much better feel then for those 1980s 8-bit computers and so on. Using it then as a Raspberry Pi desktop, as you've seen, that works really well. The touchscreen functionality works really well on that. Although Raspbian isn't fantastically um, touch friendly, of course, you can see that it, it, it can be used for that. Working as a development machine, the, the resolution of the screen does come into play there where you don't really have a lot of desktop area to work with. Um, it is usable. And again, as I say, it does give a very nice, neat system to work with but um, perhaps in using it for developing on your microcontroller, um, this isn't quite the right screen for that. But overall then, I am incredibly pleased with this. I'm looking forward to building this up then as both an emulation machine and also as an arcade desktop cabinet. So please do look out for those videos. I hope to see you again very soon. So bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.